Jeff Simon from SimonWoods.com. I've got um, a rather heavy bottle in front of me uh, of Chilean wine, uh, Manso de Velasco, 2011, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, old vines, or vinas viejas, as it is in Spanish, uh, and it's from Miguel Torres in Chile. Um, Manso de, de, de Velasco, I think, probably been doing it for quite a long time, because Torres as Torres is one of, was one of the um, European pioneers when it comes to uh, new wave Chilean wine. He got in there quite a few, a couple of decades before everyone else. Uh, and uh, But I gather that the vines for this uh, had been around for quite a long time before before he arrived. So I think they're over 100 years old, these uh, these vines. Uh, actually, I better have a look whereabouts they are. So let's have a look on the, at Curico. Of course, they're in Curico. Uh, yeah, you knew that, didn't you? Curico. So anyway, I'll stick my nose in it. Well, it's... Um, a dark brooding beast of a wine at the moment, five and a half years old, uh, but still it feels like it's one of those that's um, it's still crouching, waiting to pounce. Um, there is um, some of the classic Chilean black currant character, but there is also, and um, I, sometimes when you see uh, uh, wines in Chile and they've been made by French people, they've got their Chilean but with a French accent. Uh, this is Chilean with a Spanish accent. There's, I, I get this dusty warmth roof tiles and hot clay roof tiles that uh, I get in quite a lot of um, Spanish wine. And um, uh, it feels, yeah, that there's a brooding, uh, almost, uh, well, the, the French use the term uh, garrigue. It's got a brooding herbiness about it. And um, it feels like a wine that is just, yeah, waiting to pounce. Intense, dark. Um, there's a bit of chocolate and licorice in there. It feels warm, solid, confident. Actually, when I come to taste it, um, it's a bit more forward than I expected it to be. Uh, it doesn't feel like there's any tannin or anything that uh, needs to resolve itself. I think the question for me now is, um, how much better is it going to get in the bottle? I think it's still quite away from its peak, but it's not. And it also it feels like it's it's got the the substance, the uh, the structure to go on for quite a while. But it's where, at what point will it be at its best? Um, I'd, um, I'd like to see it in another couple of years' time, but I, it, it, after that, it will, it's capable of going on, on probably another 10, 15, even 20 years or more. Um, what's good is there's a freshness about the fruit flavours, um, and uh, the tannins are there, and the acidity is there, but they're all in balance with the, uh, the rest of the wine. What, what's the alcohol level? 13.5%. Um, yeah, it's not one of those that uh, is high alcohol, low acidity, and uh, it's, it's nice when it's young, but it's going to fall apart because uh, it's, it hasn't got the freshness. Here, it feels like it's got all the, uh, uh, it's got everything there to uh, keep it in good condition for uh, a good while yet. I'm going to have an, another sniff and a swill. Pretty tasty wine, that. Yeah, I like that. Um, and um, I think I'm going to like it even more uh, in a couple of hours. But um, as it is at the moment, they've sent me this sample bottle saying, oh, you should have it with your Christmas dinner. I'd be very happy to have it with my uh, Christmas dinner. But I'd be very happy to have it with my Christmas dinner in, uh, in like 2020 rather than uh, 2016. Uh, I think it'll be even better then. If I was forced to drink it this year, I could manage. Hey, Someone's got to do it. See you soon.